You know, as we keep building out this series of, you know, should you do planning at certain ages? And today, what we're going to talk about specifically is, should I do financial planning in my 50s? Um, the answer is always going to be yes. But let's kind of like talk a little bit about why people feel that way in the first place. Because at the end of the day, I think that um, as we get older, we forget that we're living longer, healthier, happier lives. Meaning from a physical and from an age perspective, I think people now, you know, the 50s could be termed the new 40s, right? So even if somebody was going to retire, let's say if somebody was a police officer for 20 years, from age, you know, 29 to age 49, they may retire from being a police officer, but when you're 50, you're still young. And there's so many other opportunities you could do. So as a result of it, with markets going up and markets going down, yeah, my answer is you should definitely do planning in your 50s. And we're going to get into some details on what that looks like. Thanks for checking us out. We're excited to break this down for you. So as we always want to promise, we want to make sure that we provide the best education, but we're also going to be real because somebody that's 50 in New Jersey could be different than somebody that's 50 in Nebraska, Texas, California, or Idaho. And they could be the same as well. So typically you may hear like statistical generalizations like, hey, if you're in your 50s, you should be debt free. Well, okay, what kind of debt are we talking about? Are we talking about credit card debt? I'll play with that, yeah. But are we talking about debt in real estate or debt in business or debt in something that we would call preferred debt? That's a whole other conversation. So I think that as you begin to strive towards creating continuous savings, continuously modeling your business um, opportunities, and as well as how you diversify within and amongst all the different markets, that's always real important. At the time of shooting this video, which is June 2022, you know, the stock market, whether it's the Dow, the NASDAQ, um, whether it's the S&P, even crypto and Bitcoin, they're all down off their highs. And we're in a 40-year high inflation. Uh, food's going higher. Gas is going higher. So this, if you're like 53, 52, 55, and let's say you had, just make it up a number, a million in the market six months ago, unless you were properly diversified and based on what the market's doing right now, that's going to be a lot lower and that could cause anxiety, especially if you have kids in college, right? Or if you're paying for college or if you're paying for expensive high schools and colleges, even for your kids' masters. So I guess when it comes to 50s, what I would really kind of get into is reevaluate your goals and see where you are right now. Always know where you want to go and then figure out in between what that looks like on how to get there, but also creativity and being able to have the right hand speak to the left hand along the way that maybe could create more cash flow. Maybe you can knock out some unnecessary debt or what we call non-preferred debt by really taking advantage of some of the things that have grown over the last couple of years and always be mindful of leverage, liquidity, and control and being able to take advantage of opportunities while at the same time getting multiple uses of each and every dollar. So now let's talk about like, hey, you know, you're not supposed to be in debt, but you're in your 50s. And, and, and people right now, because of COVID, I'm, I'm in my 50s as well. There's people that are passing away because of it. This isn't about scaring you about COVID. But the truth is, if you're in debt and you don't have the proper kind of life insurance, right, you want to make sure that your future value of your net worth is taken care of, even as you're creating your own wealth in your 50s into your 60s, right? So, so maybe you're not in shape. Well, get a trainer right? Start going to the gym, get a nutritionist, buy life insurance. This isn't a life insurance presentation video, but the point is if you have the right kind of life insurance that doesn't expire, and by the way, it's not going to hurt if you're saving money in it and you could use the money for other, other opportunities that come your way, but being able to have life insurance, knowing there's debt, uh, whether it's preferred or not preferred, but also being able to live the life that you want to live in a healthy manner because God willing, you do have no debt. God willing, you are worth five or $10 million. God willing, you are living the life that you want to be able to live. If you have life insurance, it allows you to spend all your money down while you're alive, knowing that that's going to replace what you spend. So that would that's also part of the planning in your 50s when it comes to, you may own a business, succession planning. Um, you may want to be able to have a buy-sell agreement in place insurance is really important in this as well. So, you know, typically, and, and some of us out there are smarter than others, but a lot of mistakes are made in 20s, 30s, and 40s that for us 50-year-olds, we probably have a lot of information that tells us what not to do, and we're really zeroing in, in on what's really successful for us. So this is the time where if capital and if your money value is increasing significantly based on 
all your different relationships and you're beginning to do well, start socking more than 10, more than 20, more than 30, maybe even 40, 50% away. Make sure you understand your lifestyle expenses. Make sure you budget things out properly. Uh, may, you know, may, At this point, maybe all your kids are done with school and you could really save even more money because your house is paid off. Whatever the case may be, understand that when retirement comes, you want to have a number on a monthly basis, but make sure you understand if it's taxable or tax-free, but a number on a monthly basis that you're really comfortable with that can help you live the life that you want to live, but at the same time, keep up with inflation, be flexible, and allow you to do other things in life as well. So this is where you kind of really do some I dot and some T crossing. You maybe hire a coach, business coach, personal coach, definitely a trainer, um, definitely a nutritionist, start building a team around you, your wife, your wife and your husband, your whole family, and really begin to synergize and strategize because a lot of good things could begin to happen if, in fact, your mind is right, your money is right, because when economic winter comes like it is right now, by the way, you could have a lot of liquidity that could take advantage and purchase certain things at deep discounts that two, four, maybe five, ten years later can be a smashing home run for you. So this is where it's always important to understand exactly um, you know, the different information you get. So we know that, you know, with a 401k up to the match is great. There's also, hey, when you get past 50, you could put even more in. And remember, the reason why you could put more in is because eventually when that money gets taxed or when it comes out, it's going to get taxed at ordinary income. So there is an incentive for the government and the financial institutions to be connected. And by the way, if the markets are going up, that's great. But, but if you put that extra in there, you don't have access to it. And if you're disciplined um, and you want to put that extra money somewhere else that could give you a better benefit, you may want to think about that. I recently did a video and it was about Dave Ramsey, who, by the way, is a great marketer. But like his whole model of, of being like static, just have no debt. And, and all the people that were sticking up for him because I had certain comments about his video we're saying that um, David's only, you know, he, he does this for people that can't think for themselves. And listen, if you want to live in a world where you can't think for yourself, and I think you're on this channel right now watching this video because you're seeking more information, you want to get educated, um, I believe that, you know, we're not the right team for you because we don't want people that can't think for themselves, right? And I'm not saying David Ramsey doesn't do good things for people because, you know, if you follow his path based on his suggestions, it seems like it works for certain people. But I think what we're saying is um, you want to be able to understand that there's certain things you can't control. That's taxes, that's market conditions, and that's inflation. All three of those are exposed inside of 401ks, right? Because 401ks are typically invested in the stock market. There's fees, inflation erodes the buying power of the dollar bill. And by the way, if you're 65 and the market goes down 20, 30% the year you're 65, you probably got to wait another five years just to break even on your money. So for us, for you, we want to make sure you have education. Yes, you could do a catch up after age 50, but the question is, is that the right thing? It's a true evaluation. You want to go ahead and click the link below, uh, sit down with one of the team members here at Ekpe because we'll take you through the success process. We will ask you a lot of questions. We will not put together a cookie cutter approach and we'll craft and design a customized plan that sits and fits with your core values. And the reason why I'm saying that is because maybe a catch-up is good, but maybe it's not. Because remember, at 59 and a half, you could start withdrawing money, but you really want to evaluate when you withdraw that money, what tax bracket you're in, and is there a balance on other tax, uh, other strategies that are tax-free that can help you with your 401k. And, and, and folks, as we work through this planning process in your 50s, the thing you really want to think about is let's say you did everything right, 70, 80%, but you did it right. You're really good. You're in retirement. You get into that retirement red zone, which to me is between age 55 and 65. But remember, that doesn't mean you can't get another job or you can't do something else. But with that being said, it's important to understand the different products and assets that you have because if you do have a good understanding and you want to be able to spend your assets down in life, let's say, let's say if you have a lot of real estate, for example, and uh, you have a big IRA or a big 401k. One of the things, and this is a deeper conversation, I'm speaking in general terms, but you may want to put your real estate inside of a charitable remainder trust so you get a massive write-off, and then you complement it with a life insurance trust that replaces the value of the real estate, but at the same time, you still get income off the real estate in life. The write-off from the trust allows you to take that write-off against your 401k and IRA 
and begin to create tax freedom or tax avoidance strategies, it's a legal term, and minimize your tax consequences through a overall um, very strategic, complicated financial plan. But with that, it's important to understand what assets you want to leave behind to your kids, to your wives. How easy are those assets? Are they, are they direct beneficiaries like it would be from a life insurance policy? Because that's all income tax free, unlike a, a direct beneficiary from an IRA or 401k. So as we go through this learning curve and this learning process, these videos are meant to educate you, but the real education comes when we spend some time specifically with your plan and your strategy. So once again, go ahead and click that link below. We'd love to sit down with you and really kind of take you through our success process. And Ken, thank you enough for checking out our channel.